today in making my sparkling rose pendant which can be turned into a brooch. If you need any of the materials you can head below the video into the description box where you find all the links to the items you will need. Gather them up and we will start working. We are starting with bezeling the cabochon. I already glued my Luna Soft cabochon which has the size of 24 mm onto my 6x6 cm piece of uh, beading foundation. You can also use lacy stiff stuff. I glued it into the middle. You can make yourself a small helping lines but I decided to embroider on this side so the lines are not visible later. We will be using Delicas. This is the new Duracoat opaque raspberry color. So uh, this time we need a specific number of beads around this cabochon to be able to fit the two whole caps in there. So uh, for this 24 millimeter cap we need uh, 54 Delicas around. You basically need for if you are using larger cabochon you need uh, any number which is dividable by three so i have um, 54 in total i'm using a milky thread and we will start very close to the cabochon i made a knot at the end and i am picking two delicas and I am going back to the beading foundation and then I am going closer to the cabochon up right in the middle between these two beads and then I'm going only through the second bead this will be base for our POD bezel and you can f uh, continue like this, always picking two beads at once, going to the foundation and coming up between the two beads, going through the second one. So in total you can count the beads, put them aside so you know when you're coming closer that you are not supposed to stick the beads so close together or make such a big gaps. So you can count them ahead and you will need to use 54 beads. So I will go around and get you later. So I got my 54 beads. My thread is coming out of the last bead I added. And now I need to step up, which is only the thing of coming out through the first beat we added. So basically we are now working and going through beads which are sticking out and which we uh, came through, went through only once. So you step up only through the first beat. And now it's a regular POD stitch. So I'm picking up one Delica. I'm skipping the bead which we went through twice and I'm going through the next one. And like this around the whole base. So picking another bead and going to the next one that sticks out like this I will go around the whole cabochon. I am about to add my last bead and I will also step up. So picking the last bead I am going through this one and also stepping up through the first bead I added in this row. Pull and now I am ready to add the next row, which is also a peyote, but there will be a small trick to it because we need to make space for the Rosetta caps. So we need to make a small pattern out of it so the Rosettas can sit on the cabochon. So first pick one Delica and go as you would with normal peyote. 
but then instead of adding a delica, just go through these two beads. We don't want the thread to be showing here, so we are instead going again through these two. Then pick another delica and go as with peyote. And like this the, around the whole cap, so now I'm picking one delica again. Then I'm going without anything through these two beads. And then adding delica again. So you will have a pattern that looks like this. And that's why we needed to have the 54 beads in the beginning or some other uh, number which is dividable by number 1, 2, 3. So I will continue like this and then we will add the caps. Again I am finishing my row with the last bead and I am stepping up through the first bead of this row. And now I will be adding the uh, two whole cabochons. I picked the rosettas to go with the pink. So it is a two hole bead so don't forget to check the holes and go through the lower one because you are, your thread should be coming out of the first delica before the little dent. So you should be ready to add the rosetta. And after that go through the second delica after the dent. Sit the rosetta on top of the cabochon, pick one delica and go through the next bead in the row and this is it. So now it's also time for another rosetta, so check the holes, go through the lower hole, through the delica here, then pick another delica and go through the next one. So on top of the larger gaps there will be rosetta caps and in the small regular peyote gaps there will be delica bead always. So go around the whole cabochon continuing the work like this. So I'm adding the last bead which was delica and now I need to step up. So I will first go through the lower hole of the cap. And then I am jumping up to the upper one. Now I'll be working with 11 O's, so regular round seed beads, because before I also worked with 11 O's badelicas. I'm using the Crystal Labrador and picking only one seed bead. I am going through the upper hole of the cap. So always add one 11 o and go around the whole piece and you want to finish up uh, coming out of this first uh, 11 o bead. After finishing this row we'll be switching to 15 o's. So you can leave it either like this or you can uh, proceed with me and add more embellishments. So pick four 15 O's and then go through the 11 O at the top. Again pick four and go through the next 11 O. So the beads should lie down around the rosettas and uh, then you can also go through all the beads without adding any other beads just to strengthen 
the last row and make it lie down more and after this I will go down with my needle through all the beads because I have a short thread already and uh, we will be starting from the bottom adding more adding cup chain around the base so you can proceed down through the beads so after going through the 50 nose I am going through the 11 o then the rosetta trying to get down to the base So you really want to just follow the beads and down to the fabric. I will knot off here my thread because it's already short. You can knot it off just to be sure that if something should happen in the next steps, you your like center, like this work in the center is safe. So you can just make a few knots and you don't have to cut your thread. But I will since I have to add a new one. So, like this, and we will be starting with the cup chain. So I have a cup chain SS12 size ready here. You can use any size you want for this, basically. And our goal is to put the cup chain around the uh, cabochon while hiding the little pieces of metal between the crystals. And at the same time, the pieces of metal will help us to hold the crystals in its place. So what you want to do when you're starting, start somewhere close to the bezel in between the delica and the metal piece and go over to the other side of the metal piece. and pull. Now you need to make sure that the crystals are really sitting close to each other. So every time you are adding or you are going over the next metal piece, you need to push the crystals together with your finger like this to make sure that they are sitting close to each other. So beginning is a bit tricky because there is a lot of cup chain pulling and not so much sitting close to each other. So be patient and try to continue. And as you progress you will see that the crystals are sitting close to each other. So I will continue like this. You can roughly measure the length of the cup chain you will need and you can cut it, but I would recommend doing it when you're very close to the end so you actually know how many uh, you need for finishing of the row because you can cut it wrong and then it's kind of difficult to uh, start again so I would prefer to have the cup chain in one piece until I'm finished after the cup chain we will be adding a row of delicas to add small um, like contrast and a bit more of the beautiful pink delicas so I am coming out uh, right uh, next to the cup chain and we'll be uh, adding delicas and we will start with three. So put three delicas on your needle 
slide it down position them so they are very close to the cup chain and they are close to each other and go down to the uh, foundation and then come back up after the first delica and go through the last two of them sorry and then pick two delicas and do the same and then you will come out after the second delica and come through all of them then you will add again two more delicas come out after the three last beads and go through the three last beads and like this around the whole cup chain so you want to be adding two beads and coming back to la uh, through the last three of them so that all the beads are aligned perfectly none of none of them is like jumping out of the row and all of them are sticking down to the beading foundation so it's a bit tedious but better than doing some long stitches with a large number of beads which are not then behaving correctly so the next step is adding the rosettas the crystals and the whole row of these so uh, I decided to follow the lines of the rosettas which are already on the cap so I'm trying to eyeball it you can be super serious and you can make some uh, guidelines for yourself but I will just try look at it and position the rosettas so they copy the ones on the cap but they are a bit further from the center so this is how I position them, but now I have to take them down. <laughs> so I finished the row and I will go first down to the foundation. I will find the first rosetta and I am putting them so that the holes are like this, so they copied the the rows so I think the position could be something like this so I'm holding it with my finger and now I'm trying to just really go close to it and make sure it will sit in the proper spot so before you make the final stitches always make sure that the rosettas are sort of in the correct place it's a bit tricky because they are uh, not perfectly 100% uh, round so there is like a bit of an oval shape but overall it's fine and after going through the lower hole go also through the upper one you can go only once through them because they have two holes so they will sit perfectly and that's the first one and then i am taking the second one position them if it drives you a bit crazy to hold them like this you can totally glue them down a bit 
and then you can just secure them with the with a thread that's also fine it will help you also in the positioning so now i am going to jump over here just go straight there it will be hidden in the back and there will be also more stitches in between when we are adding the crystals and then again the upper hole just be sure they are touching the delicas so the width of the row is somewhat consistent which will help you in the future so i will be adding the rosettas and then i will move forward to the crystals so after the rosettas uh, there are the crystals so I cheated a bit and I glued them down uh, so you can see that it works and it's really easy to then just go through them and uh, sew them down. I'm putting them so that the hole is going across and that um, because in that uh, style I feel that it's a bit more round and it copies the shape of the rosettas so you are always going across through the setting so these are the larger chatons the bezeled ones they are SS28 and like I did with the rosettas, I always go through the chaton and then I'm jumping over to the next one. If you run out uh, of thread in the meantime, just simply tie a knot, grab a new one and continue. You don't have to use too much glue because this is really just to hold it in place before you actually sew it down so just a, just a small dab and like this I am going around after the crystals are in their places now we need to fill the gaps so that the foundation is not showing so my goal was to add a bit more delicas here close to the already created delica row and as we progress outside i will add there uh, some silver beads so now the number of beads that will um, fit between the crystal and the rosetta is de uh, definitely depending on the space between them so here I will try to put on two delicas and see if they fit because the gap is quite, quite large and I might fit three but I think two is okay so what I'm doing is just coming out with my needle close to either the crystal or the rosetta and then guessing <laughs> basically the number of beads that will go between them don't try to fit there too many beads because they will push on the rosettas or the crystal so it will throw them away from the lines you already created coming from the cabochon so just gently try to fit uh, fill the gaps because you just you want to see the detail when you are looking at the whole picture that there might be a bit of um, foundation showing that's totally fine better than to stuff the gaps totally with beads because delicas are cylindrical anyway so they are not the best for this but we don't want to like introduce another color 
and I would like to work with this more. So just try to guess either one or two or maybe somewhere even three beads and put them in between the gaps going around the whole, um, the whole work. Now we will move from Delicas back to the Crystal Labrador full in 11 rows and I will jump slightly up and I will start filling the next row. So doing the same, judging if I need, I will need mostly one bead I think, which will sit on top of the Delicas. So something like this. If you feel that the gap is super small, you might try to fit the 15 -0 we used so that there's something or if it's like too small, just skip the bead. And like here, for example, I will try to push it in. But we'll see, you can also try to search for a thinner bead. but I don't want the bead to move to move the actual crystals and stuff so try and guess and then I will move again a bit up putting like two beads here and then it the embroidery should be finished and now for the final row which is lying somewhere close to the upper hole of the rosettas. So usually it's like two 11 o's. And you don't want the beads coming over the upper line because we will cut the foundation there. So usually for me it's two beads. Sometimes it might be maybe three, but two or one is the most usual count. So go around again. And after that we will cut out the shape. So after finishing the last row, I knotted off my thread and I will cut out a um, round shape. So I'm using scissors with bent edge. So you can start out a bit more further from the beads and then you can cut more later. It's definitely the safer way. Just be sure not to cut, check it on the other side, not to cut any threads you already have in there. It might happen sometimes and it's really an unpleasant experience. So just try to go around and after you cut it out just look at it if you see any like stand edges that stand out just Cut a bit more of them because you will see them later when you add the backing. So if you are using the white uh, background as I do and the white backing, just put it onto your hand, check it out. And if it's fine, uh, prepare your backing. I'm using the silver artificial leather. And because this is a pendant where I will later apply um, loops for uh, next attachment, I can glue it directly. Or you can do a brooch from it. I'm using just glue which is meant for basically everything, every kind of like textile, whatever. You can use your favorite jewelry glue. and put it onto the foundation oh, sorry the bead backing and cut out the exact shape we can first cut it out like a bit more 
so it's more pleasant to work with and then cut out the exact shape so it looks like this from the other side and then use um, depending on the fabric you used in the back on the color use the same color of thread so I'm sticking to the silver milky thread I'm making knots at the end and we'll be uh, sewing these two layers together together with uh, the 11 O's it doesn't really matter where you start but I know I want to apply loops here on these sides so what I want to do now is start to looking for a symmetrical placement so it might happen that you have like larger gaps between uh, these two so you want to probably pick some symmetrical side and I want to start at the top which will be lying here on my neck and looking at this I think I'm fine with that can check it out a bit more give it a bit of a thought just turn it around look at it see this is like to my eye here is a uh, sorry here is a larger gap so I will keep turning and like like this Yeah, so I will start here. It really doesn't matter, but it will uh, help you when you want to attach the loops so you don't have to go around the whole piece. So I'm first going with my thread to the artificial leather. I'm pushing the knot inside. So I'm coming out from the like center towards myself outside of the leather. Now I am picking two 11 O's and doesn't really matter on which side, depends which side you like more. I am going uh, right next to the first stitch on like the width is the width of the two beads. I'm coming out in the front and then I'm coming back through the second bead and pull and you want your beads lying here on the connection now I'm picking only one bead I'm going from the back to the front it really doesn't matter if you go from the back or the front like this depends on you what's better for you but sometimes it's easier to come from the back because you know where the stitch starts so you can keep even the stitching in one line like this so it looks really nice so find your own practice which suits you the most and you will be working with brick stitch around the whole edge connecting the two pieces of fabric together with the beads so go around and then you can make it brooch, you can make it pendant, it's totally up to you. After you're done with the bezel around the edge, we, you can add um, loops or a bail. And what I decided to make was a necklace with pearls like three strand uh, necklace so I needed to create loops for for these strands so what you want to do obviously you need to measure <coughs> yourself where you want to put the loops that's up to your uh, project depends on your project on your design so it doesn't matter like I it's pointless for me to give you numbers like how many beads where you would start but I measure it on myself 
and I decided that I will start adding the loops somewhere around here and this is the position at the top so you need to get there with your needle you can just go through this uh, through the foundation and simply just go there and get to the bead to the point where you need and there you will pick four 15 O's and you can go to the next bead of the bezel now just be sure that you don't catch any of the strands and then I'm going two more times at least through this loop and the beads of the bezel because it will hold the strands so it needs to stay in its place and then I need to jump to the second loop I didn't um, edit immediately to the to the next uh, bead I added it to the next one so I am going through the foundation and I'm trying to get to this bead so I'm leaving out this one and I'll be using this this one the third one and up through here and now I'm doing the same again four beads and going through the second 11 o in the bezel and going two more times through the loop and the beads and then I will jump again to this bead, this one here, and there I will start making the third loop. Then I will knot off the thread. You will have to go, you can probably knot it off too and just uh, start here so you don't have to like go such far away through the foundation that probably won't be so good. So what I did, I was uh, I knot it off and and then I um, started it again on the other side here uh, what you will do with the pendant is up to you the next one I will probably turn into a brooch I will glue a pin here and then it will be done here if you are interested you can watch the knotted uh, pearl necklace video we have on YouTube and this is the same technique and this is what I used so basically I will make the third loop and then the necklace pendant brooch whatever you're making is finished and the pendant is finished as you can see I'm already wearing it so uh, this was the uh, sparkling rose pendant which can be also turned into a brooch you can use bail, you can use loops, put it on pearl necklace, that's totally up to you. And we used it, um, we used for it Luna Soft Cabochons, two hole cabochons. You can also use uh, the classic non Rosetta 6mm caps, Delicas cap chain, and SS28 bezeled chatons together with uh, Miyuki seed beads 11 O's, 15 O's. You will also need some uh, backing material, artificial leather, ultra suede leather, what material do you like, and some beading foundation as a, as a base for your embroidery. So thank you very much for watching. You can post pictures of your final product or product in progress to our beading and jewelry making group on Facebook. If you need any of the supplies, there will be links in the description underneath the video. I hope you enjoyed making this one and I will see you in some other one. Thank you very much.